Welcome to Watching Dead, the officially unofficial podcast for The Walking Dead on AMC. I'm Jim. I am Aaron. And today we're talking about Season 9, Episode 4, titled The Obliged. Uh, the, the, the Obliged? I don't know. <laughs> we are obliged to watch this episode because uh, there's no sure other was. TV on. What'd you think of this episode? This is uh, <laughs> this is Walking Dead uh, kind of shambling back to its form. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of messy, a lot of messy, messy shit happening here. There's uh, uh, they, uh, a mont, a shaky mon- high concept montage that I thought uh, against all odds they almost pulled off, and then they went to a just I don't know seventh grade attempt at metaphor that made the whole thing crash down. Uh, they're quoting, they're 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 dropping Shakespeare references that no one in this group should should have any clue. Uh, without further explanation on uh, they've got some like this trash lady has completely gone back to crazy cr- trash lady status mm-hmm. inexplicable behavior uh, in short I loved it Jim what did you think <laughs> <laughs> wow all right uh, I, I didn't love it but I guess I didn't hate it either which is the I guess the problem with good episodes of The Walking Dead uh, yeah yeah, uh, it's, it pleases no one when an episode of The Walking yeah. Dead is good, least of all me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, mean, I, I, there are some moments that I really love when when Daryl and Rick go in this pit. I'm like, <laughs> the fuck pit. yeah, this is gonna make the rest of the episode for me because yeah. they're both pissed off at each other. Daryl has no words. I mean, yeah. he he can't express that. He's like a newborn baby trying to say, "I'm hungry." And mm-hmm. and nobody can really understand whether he's hungry or tired or yeah. needs to shit or vomit. I I don't know, but Daryl's not going to communicate emotionally with Rick. And so when they go in this pit and they're forced together like that, yeah, I'm just like fuck so, yeah. And then there are it, moments in there where Rick's trying to grab roots and jump out, and he's crashing <laughs> to the ground. And Andrew Lincoln, like I I have to believe that Andrew Lincoln didn't know that root was going to fall out. From from his grasp there, and because he just takes like an elbow straight to the ground, mm. and and turns around like you motherfuckers, what? Well, like he got dieharded, like he got Alan Rickman and diehard. Yeah, yeah, they didn't tell him that 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 was a, a trick route, <laughs> right? They had so. to get an authentic fall on your ass reaction out of Andrew Lincoln, who's uh-huh. notoriously a shaky actor. So they needed right. to they needed to manufacture a root failure so that he'd get that. Uh, bust ass reaction that that you want to get they are continuing uh to i guess up the stakes between the communities here which i i do like Um, that stuff is still working yeah just unironically stuff yeah Mm -hmm, it's pretty mm -hmm. good Mm -hmm. but yeah over a while i don't know (laughs) every once in a while i gotta dangle by a few shaky roots (laughs) (laughs) you sure do uh but that's what i thought should we get into the recap yeah let's do it okay we start off uh with a montage where each day Michonne is working to create the society that she's always dreamed of. And each night she ventures outside the gates alone to anger slay walkers with her katana. Uh, one night she spots a black man hanging from a tree and gets distracted long enough to be caught off guard by the walkers. She has to kill one with a bat, which reminds her of Negan. This is what I'm talking about. Like I, the I thought the structure of this montage was interesting. First of all, Michonne's a saint. Like she's doing all these things by day. She's literally like a slightly less psychotic Batman. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh man, because the music was weird. I thought the musical cues on the the montage switching from lightness and sweetness to dark and and vengeance was was oddly constructed. But they'd kind of talked me into it. Like okay, and I was almost thinking like. The, the the show's wanting me to think that this is like uh, unhealthy behavior, but I'm like in zombie apocalypse settings, like going out and out at night and just assassinating zombies to let off uh, steam yeah. is probably healthy behavior. Could be like yeah. it's it's the post apocalyptic equivalent of screaming into a pillow or punching a punching bag. Like this is not this is not some psychotic Negan behavior I'm watching. Yeah, and then. When she has to trade her uh, katana in for a bat and 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 beats these guys up and it's just like oh god it's like Negan she's like Negan Michonne's <laughs> realizing she's like Negan I'm like ah oh, god they were so close yeah. to having an effective character moment and then they just indulged they indulged with, yeah with, with, yeah I, I think it's silly to to I, I was that legitimately was that Lucille was that bat Lucille I I, I don't think so. I don't think so either, but and, and also if they let uh, a lot, 
Yeah, I got more to say about this Lucille business, but uh, yeah. there's a gnarly shot of that uh, uh, bat just dripping, disgusting, rotten brain chunks. Mm -hmm. um, but it also really, I think, undercut the power of the montage. But also, they're trying to say some of that montage I just fundamentally don't believe and, and, and agree with. And I don't think the show does either. And the show's the one making the montage. So, <laughs> uh, you know... Is she slipping into madness or not? Because she seems yeah. like uh, she she really handled herself well in the debates versus Negan. So I got to set you up so they can knock you down. You uh, got to. They got to like a root. They're setting us up like uh, so many rig root <laughs> right. failures. Yeah, very three inches into the wall. He'll never suspect. <laughs> uh, he, OK, so I have questions. This montage also mm -hmm. raises a lot of questions about just what a dumbass their blacksmith is. Um mm. And you might be asking why? Why does this have anything to do with the blacksmith? Well, Michonne has stacks and stacks and stacks of legal books, uh, books mm -hmm. about the law, books about organizing societies, books about uh, social engineering. I, she's got every book under the sun that helps uh -huh. her. Mm -hmm. well, can, can the blacksmith not read? Uh, he might not. He might not. Does he need doubt. a functioning historic wagon dragged in front of him and pointed to to say, here's how you make a wheel. Here's how to make an axle. His <laughs> early life uh, struggle with alcoholism left him with not enough brain cells to function like that. It must have. Well, or no, inhaling all the lead. Is he is he working exclusively with lead? Is that what's happening here? Yeah, I know. I think that's going to happen is Michelle's going to fail or Michonne's going to fail. And then a couple episodes from now, she's like, Rick. We got to go to Washington, D.C. and steal the U.S. Constitution. It's the only way I got to see a I got to see a functioning type of government uh -huh. before I can possibly recreate it. You want me to read books and all this? Get, go back to John. Go, go, go back to the days of like fucking Adam Smith and Locke and figure all this. Nah, I, I need to bill a rights. I need the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. They're going yeah, to. She gonna, traces they're, it. She literally puts a piece of tracing paper over. Season 10 stars stars uh, Nick Cage and they're going to go and. <laughs> Steal the national treasure. Go to yeah. st st steal all the national treasures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm sure I'll have more to say about the blacksmith in future episodes. I thought I thought, to, but also like this is a one staging for a zombie attack against a known badass who should not have this happen to her. Like yeah, something yeah. legit traumatic, uh, an imagery that like really shook her and took her completely like tunnel vision uh, to where they got the, you know, it wasn't just a random zombie in the middle of the woods, like yeah. coming the out of left zombie. frame. Yeah, it was like, you can do that. You can mm -hmm. manufacture scenes where even the most badass hero is taken aback and put on their back foot and has to fight for their life against ordinary zombie odds. This takes, it takes a little bit of work and thought, but they yeah. did it well here. It takes knowing your characters. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes, like you said, two seconds of thought. Plus, they've also been developing that even this season, like, you know, Michonne uh, side eyeing some of the, uh, you know, uh, pieces of the museum that's talking about uh, certain pieces of U.S. history mm -hmm. and knowing how like she doesn't want society to be organized and go. So, yeah, I, I thought that was this is this is all real, real good stuff. OK, next scene, uh, Maggie's taking care of Judith and or sorry, not Judith Herschel, uh, I think. Yeah, it's got to be Herschel. Uh, They're saving bu budget money to have one baby. <laughs> yeah. They just, pat, they just dress it up different and they pass it around. Right. Uh, yeah, so she hands off Herschel and packs a crowbar and uh, Jesus, uh, as she's leaving, Jesus kind of comes up to her and says, I've got a letter from Georgia and spots her. Uh, uh, actually, he assumes that she's off to do something risky and asks her if she's sure about it. And she says she is. Uh, I, I thought... I knew what the risky thing was. We don't ever come back to it this episode, do we? No, but Maggie I think doesn't arrive. I think that the you know thing events happen and things ensue, but like I think it's pretty clear that she wants to go bust into Negan cell and kill him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, like, there's a lot of people mobilizing to make that happen and to prevent Rick from stopping it. Um, but again, I think this shitty, is shitty bow girl. Is that that's not shitty bow girl? She died, right? I don't know if Shitty Bow Girl died or not. Because there's a the legend there's of Shitty a Bow, Bow Girl that goes with her. Yeah, yeah, that the uh, the really thick Kingdom Rider. Uh huh. She's built like a constructor class from Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't think that's Shitty Bow Girl. I don't no. think that's Shitty Bow. That's substantial Bow Girl. Um, I, I I like what they're doing here though because again, uh, you know, she's like I'm I'm uh. 
this thing where 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 Jesus asks about like any recent letters from Georgie, uh, who's the key to the future lady, if you'll recall, hmm. shows that like Jesus he agrees with Maggie that like Rick did dirty in the past, but he's looking forward to like okay, well, what can we do for our community? What we can we keep doing to our community to make it thrive? Whereas Maggie's stuck looking back in the past. And, you know, sometimes you need to do both because, you you know, a lot of people want to just keep moving forward, me, moving forward. And then there's, you know, people that are victims of certain malfeasance and they need to be made whole before you can go forward into a glorious future. Mm-hmm. And I, it's like, I mean, this is pretty good stuff. This is pretty compelling stuff. Uh, and I, I like it. And but Maggie's right that, you know, um, Rick made this call that wasn't his to make unilaterally. This is Rick's, you know, running back to, to his rictatorship roots. Um, instead of letting other people lead and, and trusting in that. And, but man, like I said, that, I, I love this shit. This is stuff I can talk about for hours because there's a lot of gray and complexity and mm-hmm. the answer of what is right to do is, is unclear. It probably should be left to the people. Yeah. And how much of, uh, Morgan has rubbed off on these, these people, you know, if it comes to confrontation, because honestly, it's sort of headed that way. Um, there could mm-hmm. be a confrontation between Maggie and Michonne. There could be a confrontation between Maggie and Jesus. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, how, how many of them are willing to take it to extremes? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it could get dangerous for people. Sure. Uh, so next up, Eugene and Rick are concerned about the flood currently putting pressure on the bridge project. Uh, Eugene advises that they postpone it. And he also says that the herds are merging. And Daryl watches as Eugene apologizes for not being good enough at anything. And I guess Rick forgives him. Says with, with one of the worst fucking lines. This line is so awkward. He, he says, yeah, you're man. not just a guy who read some books. You got us here. After everything, that's everything. And I, uh-huh. I, I God, it's such a bad, awkward. I understand. Polish I understand. that line. I understand you're bad. You're, you're, you're good at nothing, Eugene. And after everything. <laughs> That's everything. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> it's the the zen of Rick Grimes. They need a coffee table book. Yeah, it feels like it, that feels it, it feels like somebody sat for a good 25 minutes trying to come up with the capper line for this yeah. scene mm-hmm. and decided the shorter the better and the fewer words they can use the better as well. We we want four mm-hmm. words, two of them being the same. The, like they formulated out this sentence, and I, I hate it. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, the you. I, I, so I'll buy Eugene. Probably is familiar with the works of Shakespeare. He seems like the kind of guy who, if nothing, books. if nothing else, just to maintain his veneer of pretentiousness, would uh, you know crack the bard open and read it. Oh yeah, um, on Xbox Live, he, he nothing but Shakespeare quotes. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, he's quoting sonnet. Uh, uh, chapter and verse and in all an iambic pentameter. Uh, but I think that he, he drops this things like, you know, these two zombie herds are Tybalt and Cordelia. And I'm, I'm sure I don't need to tell you what that means, Rick. And Rick's like, blink, blink, blink. No, I got it. Yeah, I get it. I'm a small town cop in rural Kentucky. <laughs> I, I've, I, I, I read Shakespeare. Um, I mean, I not that not the people in, in rural Kentucky don't ever read Shakespeare as a person mm-hmm. grew up in rural Indiana. Sure, they do. But still, you know. Yeah, we have stereotypes for for reasons sometimes. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna get a very good uh, hit ratio when you're quoting uh, Shakespeare to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. small town sheriffs. Uh, but, but honestly, I I didn't even know the reference. Like I don't I don't read Shakespeare at all. Uh, yeah, and I I don't necessarily get it either because. Like you got a a side character from Romeo and Juliet who's I, mean, I guess they both met bad ends, but the herds are named after that. So the you know like like literally that means the herds are going to come to bad ends. That's good, right? The <laughs> right. herds coming to bad ends is good for you. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Carol's leaving the bridge camp with her people, but not to go back to the sanctuary. She thinks those people need to figure it out on their own, just like. Uh, they did and then Rick's not so sure if it's going to work but Carol gives him hope yep she uh, I mean it's it's funny that uh, so what we, we a couple so Carol took on the project of this you know um, trying to redeem the saviors and yeah. be their leader and how many weeks have passed like maybe six yeah I think it's like a month ish sure yeah like we're still in spring flood season so 
she's just ready to she's like yeah i really wanted this to work and they had that scene last week that where you know seemed like she really bought into the law and order side and now we have a complete collapse and reversal of that uh again this is the walking dead kind of um do doing the doing its thing not not sure about yeah yeah i'm not sure of the timeline here um was the last episode the one where every all of the saviors just walked off the job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then there was another month where Carol was like in the sanctuary saying, please come back to the job or? I don't, like I was saying, saying like they, they skipped ahead and obviously things didn't get done before just the floodwaters returned because of the lack of savior manpower. But the other yeah. thing is like, what are the saviors doing? Like, are they starving now? How many weeks be. has it been? They don't have any food. They're not going to get any. They're not going to have any fuel. Like I feel like, I wish we'd gone back to the saviors. To see. I, I honestly, I, I they need a, a couple savior characters so we can see their side of the thing. Imagine you know like uh, Game of Thrones. Imagine Game of Thrones turning out bad. Imagine Game of Thrones in the early seasons if like you never got in any of the interior thoughts of the Lannisters, mm -hmm. and like you know you always heard things from like the Starks and the the Baratheon side. Like you we don't have any visibility in what the savior culture looks like other than it seems like some people are rationally are supporting Negan and some people are treating Rick as like Jesus Christ. None of those things are healthy. Yeah. Has that, uh, you know, anti Rick movement, I guess, pro Negan movement been, uh, growing in the last month. Have, have they yeah. basically written off the other communities and they're working on their own? I'd like a little bit yeah. of insight. I mean, look at all the shade nuance we get on on the 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 you know our sympathetic side, like the nuance yeah. between like Jesus and Maggie, and even uh, Rick, uh, Rick and like uh, a Carol here. But you know, what's a what's a savior centrist look like? I don't know. We just see the two. I I just think that there's there's a missed opportunity for us to uh, understand the world building uh, are, even more. Are there savior centrists? Because this show does not have a history of painting with a. Uh, a broad range of colors when it comes to, uh, you know, it, it, when, when they want to shade in like the feelings of a community, they don't, they don't really do that, especially with the bad guys. Like yeah. there was nobody in Terminus who was like, Oh, I'm the good one. You know, uh, you can come true. help me. There's no underground railroad sneaking people out of cart a or whatever. Right. That's uh, true. But that's, but the, the, I, I think that, um, it's that's a good point for story time because we're not supposed to feel conflicted or anything when mm -hmm. the Terminus people got purged, right? Like sure. they just were bad people and they had it coming. Are we supposed to feel that way about the saviors and the savior complex? I don't like, think so. Everything I mean, been that, from the I thought other that's the shades of gray that like, yeah, like these people, you know, yeah. they, they had a bad start and they're, you know, they're they had they're underprivileged as far as their soil and their contamination. And they had bad leadership for all this time. And there's a lot of brainwashing going on. It's like. You know, if if South Korea and North Korea ever united, reunified uh, after six weeks with the South Koreans, be like, Jesus Christ, we're tired of these poor, filthy, ignorant people. Just just fucking bomb them all. You know, let's just like yeah. just start from scratch. Like, that's what it feels like we're going to. And if you were going to do that and you want it to seem like a bad idea, you need some you need some people on the savior side to kind of identify with and, and experience that horror or yeah. or confirm that, yes, these people are all shits and they don't deserve it. I, I don't know. Yeah, we used to have have that in uh, Dwight. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah, 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 Dwight used to kind of be that a little bit, but no longer. Then he took off. He'll be back. In search for insulin <laughs> or something. And, and Heath's key card. Uh, okay, so the Quilted Mountain rides up and tells Rick and Maggie. Uh, Rick, that Maggie, is headed to Alexandria. Rick calls the walkie relay system to warn them. Uh, but the Oceanside girls running the relay uh, decides not to send the message. Daryl offers to give Rick a ride to Alexandria on his bike, which I think mm. everybody knew when they saw this where that was going, right? The resistance is forming. Uh -huh. Like, it's so interesting that Rick... I mean, it also shows how out of touch Rick is with, like, the sentiment because AR1 is Alexandria Radio. I mean, that's that's a complex staff by his people, you would assume. Yeah. I also, I love the world-building detail. That, you know, uh, they acknowledge that walkie talkies don't have these universal ranges, so they have to mm. use like relay stations to relay messages along the trail. And if one person decides, you know what, fuck your politics, Rick Grimes, then that message yeah. is going to break down. Uh, it's really fucking fascinating to see a guy like Rick um, 
you know, be betrayed in this way because he just he just takes for granted the unswerving loyalty of his people. Yeah. Uh, and then Nora visits Michonne. Uh, I don't know that Nora is a character we've seen before. Um, at least I don't recall her, but it's been years, literally, uh, to tell her that their tomatoes are being eaten by crows, which is apparently a problem humanity cannot solve. It is something that we cannot overcome the number of birds eating our crops. It's never been done in human history. This has been a problem. It, you know, it's why we grow all of our crops indoors uh, to keep mm-hmm. them away from crows. Yeah, the menace. Right. Uh, uh, Hitchcock wrote a uh, uh, <laughs> made a uh, documentary about it. Sure. Do they not have a book for this? Do they not have like? Do they need to be shown a scarecrow to to know how to keep? Crows well, out. you know, the saviors were trying to pioneer scarecrow technology with the uh, harnessing zombies to scare the crows away. And uh, Daryl said no. So, you know, they're in the way of progress. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why they use zombies, because they didn't have a working example of a scarecrow to copy. So they, they, they couldn't reverse engineer the scarecrow technology. What if we took the zombies clothes <laughs> and, and we replaced the zombie with mm-hmm. some kind of substance that would hold that show those clothes shape? And then maybe Daryl wouldn't be pissed off that we're desecrating these human bodies. I don't know. Yeah, it'd don't never know. work. It'd never work. It'd, 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 it'd scare the crows away. We could call it something like Scarecrow. There you go. A little too on the nose, but we can use it. Yeah. Uh, also, Negan's on a hunger strike, and Michonne says she'll handle it. Mm. Uh, yeah. So then we move on to Daryl driving Rick the wrong way and telling him things have changed, and they're going to go the way that they were supposed to before and they fight and they end up getting stuck in a big hole. Uh, this is the most soundstage thing since like the next generation. Which you know, part like the hole? It just the hole, right? This yeah. is clearly, this is uh, Andrew Lincoln and Norman Reedus got to do a week or two of filming in a climate controlled studio and, and good for <laughs> you guys. Climate controlled hole? Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's not in real life. That's a soundstage, man. Oh yeah, no, yeah, I believe you. yeah. They're sweating in eighty degree Georgia heat all to. Yeah, I don't begrudge them their week in a in a soundstage, but it's clearly what it is. And also, what is this pit? I was gonna Why say it there... explains how the hole got there. A but, production crew dr- dug it. Uh, yeah, I mean, where the fuck? Why is there a pit this close to Alexandria that apparently none of these guys know about? Was it like some for some kind of project? I don't know. There's nothing in it. There's nothing around yeah. it. It's not yeah. like this is, you know, it's right really next to a gravel too. pile that they dug out. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, in the old days, you think, oh, this is some wily coot to use his backhoe to make a zombie trap. But like, this is their neighborhood. They did this whole why? 4K. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, I also man. love how Daryl just lets his bike drop like he's just ready to go. Uh, like, uh, you know, like uh, it's like a kid getting ready to fight at a little uh, at a playground you know just like let throws his bike on the ground puts up his dukes yeah let's fight ah. okay is it is it pretty easy to pick a bike back up it doesn't seem like uh it. That, that looks pretty lightweight that looks okay. a pretty lightweight bike it's not so bad but gotcha. uh like it's not like a full dress harley those things can can uh <laughs> can take some heft i, I watched a dude drop his uh, full dress harley at a, a gas station he couldn't pick it back up himself he had to, like have two other oh. guys help him out Damn. not so badass man Really, really hurts your your biker gang credentials. Not be able to lift your own bike, dude. <laughs> uh, okay, Michonne shows up uh, to tell Negan to eat, and Negan says he'll only eat if she stays to talk to him. And so she gives him twenty minutes, which is a lot. That's pretty generous. I like it though. She comes out of the food and just essentially stern. She uses her mom's mom's voice on him. Right. And he's like, "That's all you got." You know, you got to play the food and yeah, I got a closed mouth. Let's see which (laughs) see see who gets their way first. (laughs) Would they for I also I I wondered, like. Would they intravenously feed this man to keep him alive? Are they this committed to the peaceful transition (laughs) of power? Do they have that technology? I mean, surely that uh, their new doctor, I can't remember his name. uh, Surely he can. Well, I don't know, because like. How do you how do you put like two thousand calories through a person's arm? Like those those are probably some pretty specialty IVs that you'd, you you can't That's just like uh, you can't just like puree ban- puree bananas and shoot them in someone's veins. <laughs> yeah, soil. Stick it. a tube. Do it. Do a tube through their nose down into the stuff. Like like tube feed them. I, I don't know. Ugh. Seems kind of shaky. Yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, they're clearly concerned about the hunger strike, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Daryl and Rick in the whole argue about why Negan needs to die. Daryl lets slip that Oceanside killed the saviors, and Rick says he's doing everything uh, for Carl. Daryl tells him, let Carl go. He's old news. He's last season. Uh, and have some faith in the people who are still alive. And this is when Rick tries to jump out of the hole, just bust his <laughs> ass. I I believe he really fell in that scene. Um, there's a couple things. I, I thought mostly this conversation is pretty good and the staging was oh, yeah. silly, but they needed something to, like you said, you know, Daryl is not like he would in any other situation. He walked away and been like, no, nah, man. And this yeah. is like st- stormed off like 30 seconds into any one of these exchanges, but he's trapped. Yeah. Um, but like Rick comes back with like, well, you spared Dwight. And then Daryl came back with like, so what what did he say? Something about like, uh, oh, you mean the man who did this, that, like, like he, he I feel like he minimized Dwight's deal. He's like, you know, oh, you mean the man who locked me in the closet, and made me listen to music and stuff. And like, you know, I'm like past that. Definitely. And then but it like also Dwight killed a lot of people that people mm-hmm. cared about. And I wasn't sure what the actual point was that Rick was trying to make or Daryl was trying to make in defending it. Um. Because the, the, the crux of the argument is, um, you know, you made a call that it wasn't yours to make. That's what they keep coming back to. Mm-hmm. And uh, when other people do it, Rick gets super fucking pissed and can't believe that they're doing this. But then when he gets to do it with impunity and it's like he doesn't even see it anymore. So I thought it was was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, what do you think of Rick's logic about the martyr stuff? Like, do you uh, kill Negan and he becomes a martyr? I. So this is a problem with like trying to gauge the temperature of a group of people we don't really see. Um, we don't mm. know. I, I don't feel like I have a good handle on how the sanctuary feels about Negan. Uh, yeah. Like he was kind of a tyrant while he was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people I would assume would be happy to be rid of him. The ones that are supporting the tyrannical and benefited from the tyrannical regime. Sure. Uh well, they would be the ones who probably would, you know, miss him. Um, oh, okay. I thought you said the. I, I thought you were just making the opposite point. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, yeah. So there would be people on all sides. I guess is the point. And I don't know that they've really shown us much of that. Like you said, it's it's been kind of this one note and almost no note uh, mm-hmm. savior thing because the people we see are sort of under Rick's thumb in his community, uh, doing their thing, uh, doing his thing rather. Mm-hmm. And we don't get a good glimpse into the sanctuary itself other than like yeah. a piece of graffiti one time when Daryl walked through it. And this crowd of kind of like, you know, cringing people uh, bowing at Rick's feet saying, thank God for you, Rick Grimes. Oh, Rick Grimes is here to protect. It's like, yeah, we got like a, a one minute scene that just portrayed two giant extremes but no idea of like are the spray paint like five percent of the population and the rick worshipers are 95 percent because the chance of martyrdom and that's pretty damn low uh i always thought the savior thing was kind of like the galactic empire that like once you overthrow the empire then you'd you know have you'd pan over the population and there'd be a whole bunch of people like beating up stormtroopers and shit and there'd be fireworks going off in the background like they're painting it like it's a you know, 55 anti Negan, 45% pro Negan, and the boy, those 10% could swing either way. Like, really? I yeah. I guess that doesn't that doesn't seem consistent with with uh, my 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 experience of humanity. But uh, I don't know. Uh, also, there's also something at the end that I didn't quite get to. Um, he, you know, D- Daryl's like, you know, you got to hear me on this Negan thing. And Rick rhetorically goes back with, I never ask anyone to follow me. And he says, maybe you should have. Is he actually saying that maybe Rick should have instead of like constantly trying to avoid the leadership role, just like fucking led? Like, all right, God, because mm-hmm. he did that in the famous. This is no longer democracy right. uh, speech. Yeah. And then like, I felt like Rick learned the lesson that doing that got a whole bunch of people killed and he doesn't want responsibility for that. He wants to share the load. You know, a little bit of more democratic process. Is yeah. Daryl wanting a dictator again? What the fuck? It's tough because I feel like in the world they're living in, a lot of people are going to get killed no matter what. So yeah. if you take too many lessons away based on how many people get killed, yeah, you might really just be confusing the issue. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to like, I remember this is season two is like, is 
Rick is the leader that a pre-apocalypse society holds up as the gold standard, but Shane is the actual leader that keeps your people alive. Sure, but sure. The Shane, does Shane actually, once he gets to a place of stability, moderate and or does he turn into a Negan or a governor figure? Right. Um, and I don't know, because like that's it feels like that's the the two sides of the show. It's like, you know, if you got a good person, they're going to be too weak to lead and protect and you eventually get take over by a bad person. If you have a strong person, they'll eventually let it go through their head and turn into some 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 kind of psychotic post apocalyptic uh, Torquemada situation. I, I but like. I don't know. That's a that's an interesting dynamic to have for the show. Yeah, it's I guess it's a shame that just as Rick's uh, lack of leadership is becoming <laughs> becoming a problem, he's distancing himself further from it. Yeah, yeah. That's the other you thing. Know, it's, it's like, like he, he could have they could have used that Shane like leadership before, but he didn't want to provide it, and now he doesn't want to provide the other type of leadership that they need. Now that yeah. things are getting back on track. Yeah, it feels like he speaks out of both sides of his mouth sometimes where he he likes being deferred to and seen as a leader, but he also likes mm. to disavow leadership whenever he's on like a real, you know, he's dancing on the horns of a dilemma. So, yeah, I think he likes to be involved like that. That's the thing. Rick likes to get in there and be a part of building things. And sometimes, yeah. you know, that works. Uh, sometimes that doesn't. Sometimes he's at the the spearhead of that. Sometimes as in now he's trying to step away from that role, but still be heavily involved. Like, yeah, I don't know that he can have it both ways being, being like at the center of the, the building process, but also not being the leader. Well, and also it's like, he, he's had times where like, you know, him and Daryl have been at odds. Maybe him and Maggie haven't seen the eye to eye about something, but like when Daryl, Carol, Maggie and Jesus are all like, Hey man, maybe there's a side of this you're not thinking about or listening to. Uh, the fact that that does give Rick no pause that he, I think they're onto something that Rick has got like, um, in the same way that Negan was obsessed with keeping things safe and restoring or order, and that like led him to psychotic uh, realms. I feel like they're suggesting that like uh, Rick's desire to make Carl's death mean something. You know, Carl's just a kid; he doesn't know sh- shit. Uh, you know, like this, this last letter is this thing that is like making him do these crazy things that are causing, that are disrupting an otherwise peaceful, well-functioning society. Uh, it's, it's, you know, this, the, the, the road to hell paved with good intentions, all that kind of stuff I, I think is pretty cool. All right. Negan and Michonne argue for a bit before Negan ropes her in with a story about his wife's cancer and questions about her dead son. And eventually he says that they would have just made them weak. Uh, if they were still around, which pisses off Michonne. There's this moment where, like, uh, you know, Negan's trying to appeal to her, like, cage tiger self, and she's like, you know, like, how bored she must be. She's like, I'm rebuilding the world, you asshole. I'm making laws and creating society from nothing while you're in here rotting. Yeah. And then she, like, kind of, like, dusts her forearms off, and it's like, it was so fucking badass. It needs to be, it needs to be a reaction uh, gif, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I feel about these scenes because, like, uh, I don't know. Michonne should know better than to engage on this stuff, but also he you can see, you know, Negan doing what he does. He's probing around the edge. He's trying to find the weaknesses, and I think it's pretty well constructed in that regard. Yeah, It's just like some of the dialogue is weird, and it, I don't know. It all seems a, a little bit much as well. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the other thing is like I actually I thought the way where this landed because I'm like, oh, this is kind of interesting. This kind of Hannibal Lecter versus Jodie Foster sparring, mm-hmm. intellectual sparring, like tearing down their ideals and oh, you're no more better than me or maybe I'm even better than you. Right. And at the end, it's like imagine if Hannibal Lecter like was doing all this crazy shit on uh, Agent Starling and then at the end he just the whole it was all for him to get his favorite Wooby back. He's not escaping uh, yeah, so he can have part. his freedom. He's not doing, he's just like, Claire, I just, can Can I touch my old scalpel? Mm-hmm. Can Can I Can I have my favorite uh, Favre fork? Like, it just cheapens the moment. And it's like, oh, yeah. this guy's not like, 
we call him crazy, but maybe he's at a higher level of intelligence and awareness that we just can't channel. And it instantly reduces him to, oh, no, he's just stark raving mad. Yeah. He's just a fucking lunatic that's got no plan beyond, you know, jerking it to this bat. And uh, it really undercuts some of the stuff they're doing otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll talk more about it when we get there. But mm. poof. Uh, OK, so Trash Lady preps Gabriel's body for one of her perverse garbage rituals. Uh, he pleads with her to be better than this, but she's not interested in redemption. She begins to lower a walker down onto his face, but he continues talking and eventually changes her mind, deciding instead to knock him out. Oh, man, this. Uh, this G- this this Jesus in your way to salvation stuff is like, you know, he's he's it's it's so funny because I just. I don't know. In the history of the world, has this ever stayed in anyone's hand to be like, it doesn't matter what you do to me. I forgive you already. It's fine. It's fine. No. Like, and, and clearly it didn't. Hear. You know, Jesus I mean, did it. Jesus did it on the cross. But guess what? He still died. The Roman the like Pontius Pilate didn't road for right. it. Pull that man down. I want to um, hear what he has to say. Like, no, nah, he's still like, come on. I and also, Jim, can you explain to me what an A is and, and how does providing an A involve lowering a zombie into a man's face slowly through com- convoluted contraption. Well, well, I mean, clearly the where you're going wrong here is that he's not an A. He thought it, she thought he was an A. He's actually a B. And so it all makes sense. <laughs> but she still needs an o- A. Obviously. Well, right? How is this manufacturing an A? No, it all makes trade. sense. Stop thinking about it. It makes perfect sense. I guess. I guess. I was like the second. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, she... It's just such a weird character that she's like this crazy oh. trash lady. And then she Jesus reveals all oh, actually understatement of the year, man. <laughs> yeah. But, but I mean, just really like to plow into the pathos of the character that she's like this insane trash lady. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, no, we were actually just kind of cosplaying and it got out of hand. And now she's mm-hmm. part of this like weird post apocalyptic helicopter wielding trash militia that trades lives and quantities of A's and B's for passage to some promised land. Like I, it's such a, this character is from Mad Max Fury road. We need another 10 or 15 years to, to, to get that kind of well-developed uh, bullet farmery. Uh, I, I just, she's and the, the fact that she went, then she went back to Anne and she's the mild mannered school teacher and helping everybody. And the second Rick, had a reasonable suspicion she's back to crazy trash lady cosplay yeah. it's it's insane no the, it's the, insane. the trash people have been yeah i'm pretty comfortable saying the worst part of this show uh mm-hmm. they they peaked in season eight and we stopped covering it because the show got so fucking bad mm-hmm. uh the the trash people have been garbage the entire time uh and and they've never They've never bothered to go back because you got to take the you got to roll this plot back. You got to let us in, help us understand, try and figure out a way where any of their actions make sense, uh, and then explain that to the audience because they've never done that. And yeah, the I just Jadis feel like s- continues to just be. I I don't even know how to read her. Yeah, I feel like the trash people are a result of like Greg Nicotero coming into zombie concepts after a summer of listening to Megadeth and Iron Maiden and be like, look at these albums. This uh-huh. is how I, this is the direction I want to take the zombies. And the writer's like, all right, I guess we got to We got to We got to manufacture a culture that justifies this kind of shit. And they work backwards because, uh-huh. again, it's like she instantly it's, it's not. Do you think that that zombie was just chilling in trash people's storage or did she take the time while Gabriel was knocked out to do this elaborate headdress fucking HR Geiger shit to well, her? I mean, it's, She's it's just all like, obviously an elaborate ruse. Like she never intended to kill him at all, because if you look at the end, uh-huh. she decides not to kill him. And instead, she knocks him out with a chloroform rag that she just had. <laughs> she just had it on her. So That's clearly his that was always That's the end game, right? Uh huh. Yeah, that's just how trash ladies roll. They always have a a, a bottle of chloroform in, in case. What just the fuck? In case. Just in case. You meet an A. You might need some chloroform. <laughs> she's not gonna. She's not gonna. She's not gonna be unprepared, Jim. Fair. In the apocalypse, <laughs> you can never be unprepared. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, the saviors roll up on the bridge camp and tell Carol that they're gonna kill the Oceanside community. Carol pretends to back down with a gun trained on her, but it attacks the guy instead. Uh, gunfire goes off a battle ensues concerning the nearby Daryl and Rick who try to get out of the pit before it tracks the herd 
Um, boy, I tell you what, Blackbeard smacking uh, Carol down as a weak woman that, that historically has no not idea. gone not gone well for people. This is no. this is uh, this is fucking Rambo you're messing with. Uh-huh. Uh huh. She she single handedly ended ter- the Terminus people. Uh, you have no fucking clue. No fucking clue. Yeah, it, it was great to see that too. Uh, yeah, the entire when, time when, I was sitting there just thinking, Jesus Christ, man. Oh, I was I was rubbing my hands together, licking my lips, like, man, she's uh, gonna she's gonna make her move, and all hell's gonna break loose. And by <laughs> God, it did. <laughs> sure did. And like Rick, Rick and Daryl instantly getting sobered up. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's funny because like, did Rick not like Rick was kind of like, oh, I'll I'll. Because the stakes originally were Maggie's heading over to kill Negan. So, like, Rick is kind of like nonchalant. Okay, I could try to get out of this pit and stop all that. Or I can engage Daryl in an intellectual debate. Uh, But then, like, you know, nearby shots going on. It's like real shit. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Is a little bit. Is I I guess the labor. Maybe they care. They both care more about the bridge than they do Negan. And he knows the herds in the area, too. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it but becomes an issue very quickly. Realizing they need to cooperate. Again, I just feel like this particular B plot was very Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah. Like, you know, this is uh the the two captains down on the planet trying to Darmok and Jalad, yeah. like, you know, it's a bunch of false conflict and then something that unifi- unites them at the end and overcomes their differences and you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, we go back to Michonne doing her homework, desperately trying not to go zombie hunting. Instead, she goes to feed Negan again and has, uh, and to ask why he said the things he said before. And he says, they're the same. She gets pissed about it and denies it. Uh, he realizes she's scared of losing what she has, and she tells him to shut up and eat. <laughs> and then he takes one bite and asks to see Lucille. And we get a ridiculous moment with the governor. Or, or a, a governor-esque note to end that the, conversation on. It's like... The Neganator. It, yeah, it, it's. I mean, he's. I. I guess I never thought of Negan as just as crazy as the governor. No, I thought. I thought of him as just as ruthless and just as uncaring, but not yeah. as crazy. And yeah. this totally changed my mind. Yeah, like him beating his head on the wall till it's bloody. Like that's not. I. It's just like again. Like imagine Hannibal Lecter doing that after a particularly frustrating exchange with with the uh, agent Starling. Like. You, you he loses all of his like mystique yeah oh he's, he's a, just a oh we, he's just a crazy person I thought he might have a point or he might yeah. have something to say about society or some kind of in you know like is he just crazy or super smart insight about the world and then he just starts beating his head against it and like oh no he's just there's not much shades of gray he's just he's just a, he's just a lunatic yeah. Um, and the rest, like I said, I, I thought a lot of this stuff was really cool. Like Michonne going on this arc, like maybe it's a little ham fist in the beginning that she herself privately was worried that she was going down the Negan road. But, um, you know, this thing, uh, uh, where she kind of like has him, uh, intellectually hands him his ass and saying, um, you know, you're the one trying to desperately connect to me because, uh, there's things in this world that we have to hold on to nothing that the, the, the and when we have nothing left and, um, you know, I get, I do get strength from the dead like you, but unlike you, I actually live for the living and not just for myself and for this, this nihilism. And I thought that was all great. And then Negan starts beating, it starts crying for Lucille and beating his head against the wall. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, man. And also, you know, the man's on, on like suicide watch, hunger strike. You maybe should pad. It's time to pad the walls. Maybe it's time to put this man mm-hmm. under 24 seven guard. Maybe Could someone be. should be looking at him, but like also, that's tricky because he's going to do the Hannibal Lecter shit. How do you, <laughs> right. you know, you, you stick uh, AR1 repeater girl down there and she comes out leading the violent Negan revolution. <laughs> sure. It's a, it's a trick. It's a sticky wicket that, uh, and this is, this is exactly, I think Maggie and everyone's point. Like Rick did not think this through, mm-hmm. you know, Rick took a 13 year old's death note and trying to, trying to reconstruct society from it. It's insane. Earplugs. That's my solution. A guard with earplugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Earplugs. Done. Just watch him, but don't listen to him. Yeah. All right. Uh, we get to another good scene here where the walkers come tumbling into the pit and Rick and Daryl are climbing the sides. Uh, Rick makes it out and then helps Daryl climb climb the word brother right out of the pit. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and they run to Daryl's bike, but Rick wants to stay and draw the walkers away. Yeah. He refused to sacrifice the bridge to do it. 
This reminds me, I don't know what this is. Like, uh, these zombies tumbling over to pit. It, it felt like something like a video game. Yeah, you know? I, I have written here, uh, the flood earlier led to a walker fall here. That's bad. <laughs> I know it's and bad. Then, and then, and then Daryl's getting his double stabs in, and he, he, build, uh, he builds like a partial ladder of corpses yep. uh, to scramble over. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. And then they have the, you know, the emotional bro moment at the end for the cherry on top. It's hey, man, this is peak walking dead. This is this is like <laughs> this is like pretty good season two silliness. I, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. They're fucking they're destroying Negan as a good character. Sure. But because, uh, yeah, what are they planning for his arc? I always assumed because I, I stopped reading the comics like an episode or two ago. Right. But I always assumed that like Negan would either be dead or. Or they would redeem him somehow. Um, I guess they're just going to kill him because I don't see how you redeem a character. It's like he's kind of like he gets a point like Morgan where like once you snap so badly, like without intensive psychotherapy and drugs, you're not going to snap back, man. You're just not. Uh, And I feel like they're in that territory of Negan now. So I guess he's just going to die. I think Maggie's going to beat him to death with a crowbar or something. Could be. Yeah. All right. That's my official prediction. Death by maggie crowbar in the prison complex if you're if you're playing clue at home uh so gabriel wakes up in jadis's house uh excuse me sorry trash person's house uh she's nowhere to be found but she did leave him a note that basically says he's dead weight nice of her (laughs) oh we forgot in the previous scene where uh uh rick or did I get my notes wrong? Because like there's a scene of like them getting out and the herds on them and Rick steals a horse and plans on leading zombies away from the camp. And, and Daryl gives one the best. Everyone asks for my wildcat Daryl impression, but like he just does it. He does. He does it like when Rick's like, come on, we got to go. And he's, he's like, nah, nah, man. You know, it's, it just comes right out. Like in any uh-huh. time of high stress and emotion and caring for Rick, you get the you get the Daryl wildcat. And that's that's where it is. You need oh, yeah. the, the if you want to get a good example. I know a lot of people that watch the show. Should you should get on Netflix? Fast forward to this point, you get a prime Daryl primal scream. So Michonne reads to Judith, uh, and the the book she's reading has a picture of a bat in it, and Michonne has to abort uh, Operation Read to Judith. Yeah, yeah, baseball bats uh, are highly triggering now. Apparently, to her. it's really as you watch out, it just might center on a whole other character arc. She's one, <laughs> she's, she's just one more bat away from. Oh, by the way. What did you think of the assertion that they just left Negan's bat in that field where it lies? There's no way in a million years that bat's still there. If they go back later in the season and someone picks up that bat, there's no fucking way that there's not a crazy savior that has or like that's worshiping Negan to the point of like spreading graffiti and resistance stuff. No yeah. one's gone back to reclaim the bat. Is the bat under twenty four seven guard? Is this laying out there? <laughs> it Everyone is. Everyone knows not, the location. But the bat is. It's it's like it's like everyone knows the lo- location. It's like the biggest battle of the war. It's a very, yeah. a very it's under a very uh, distinguishable landmark. Uh, yeah, a pane glass window on a tree or something. Yeah, I- yeah. They should have like the, the that's that's other piss poor planning from Rick. You got to take the signature weapon of the bad guy. You can't just leave it there. You're talking about symbols and martyrs yeah. and shit. Come on. You, you got to burn it. You got to burn it as a symbol. But I just know there's going to be like uh, th- it's probably going to be the season nine cliffhanger. Negan like breaks out of jail like Andy Dufresne, Dufresne mm-hmm. and he's covered in shit and it's nighttime and there's thunder clapping and he goes and reaches down and gets the bat and holds it up to the. Yeah, it's like, yeah, come on no. maybe, maybe the flood will wash it into his cell. Maybe, there, maybe it'll wash it into the basement where he is with a waterfall of zombies. He beats them all to death and uh-huh. then he's 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 Negan reactivated, baby. That's Walking Dead for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the last scene, Maggie and that bow girl spot some dead walkers. Daryl rides back, and Rick leads the herd toward a larger herd. Uh, his horse gets scared and bucks him off, and he's impaled on some rebar and passes out while the herd approaches. Cliffhanger. And, and this, this is actually a pretty suspenseful cliffhanger. I mean, yeah, like, I, as, I, as cliffhangers go, sure. Yeah, when I got here, I was like kind of wanting to go to the next episode. I had to stop so we could do the podcast, and I wouldn't spoil myself. But like... Uh, um, I mean, it's almost too good because it's hard to believe that he's going to get out of this situation. Right. You know, I know Daryl's right there. Maggie and she and, and uh, substantial bow girl are, are around as well. But like it's still man, it, it looks bad. It looks bad for our, our hero, Rick Grimes. Also, I think the other thing is um, 
a part of the, I think part of the juice around Rick in this season is the I I think the widespread knowledge that Andrew Lincoln is going to leave the show. Wasn't that something that likes pretty much an open secret? I and think people, so. Um, so like I was thinking like, oh, man, maybe this is the end because I don't I didn't keep up with that. I don't know. I actually I asked really Jason. Uh, I actually asked Jason C uh, when we were working on the Legion, the last, the final Legion season, like, so whatever happened to Rick Grimes? And he was pretty cagey about it. Hmm. So is Rick alive maybe still? Like, he, I wonder if it's one of those key card and he just takes off into the woods. I wonder if it's going to be like a Morgan situation where it's like, uh, oh, no. Gonna, yeah, he's just going to wander spin-off. off. But but he might be spun off. He might be kept for a flagging ratings on season 13. Who knows? Right. Right. Andrew Lincoln just said, I just need a few summers off. I can't go to Georgia and run around barefoot in 90 degree heat. Can I just stay in England for a while? And I don't, then, I don't uh, know that I've ever seen Rick with his shoes off. To be fair. <laughs> this, is, this is a defining character trait. Come on. Shoeless Rick Grimes, they call him. <laughs> Maggie was the widow. The uh, king. Shoeless, shoeless Rick. That's what they called him. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, that's the superficial drama of The Walking Dead is is his character going to live through the through the break. Uh, yep. And that's it for the episode. Yep. 904 in the books. Uh, well, if you uh, uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this again, I uh, just want to stress that we recorded all these things in advance. In fact, uh, as of the time of recording, we haven't even released our first episode to the public. So we're excited about that. It's happening uh, in our recording time. It's happening, I think, later today. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're really far ahead because we're doing this to kind of fit our recording schedule. And we're not taking feedback during every episode, as you've probably surmised. But we are collecting it because we're going to do like a little uh, mini feedback uh, during the midseason break there after episode 908 and probably again at the season wrap up after the conclusion of season nine. Uh, if you want to send that in, do so at watching dead at baldmove.com. You can also follow us along uh, and see what our release schedule and what we're up to at bald move and all the social medias and participate, participate in our forums, forums.baldmove.com. We'll be back next week for the thrilling conclusion of Rick Rebar. Until then, I'm Aaron and I'm Jim. Have a good one. Have a good one.